Welcome to Sibspot. Our Reddit stories today are from Malicious Compliance. Story one is by Frost Dragon 57 and it sounds like a story that just came out of Texas, honestly, because, you know, F human rights and everything. I'm not authorized to go get a water? All right. Now, before I start, here's a bit of context for the situation. I work in the boat industry as an engine tech and parts painter. I know, quite a broad range right there. Anyway, the company I work for is quite old, and the building I work in is even older. The heating system is trash, and we really lack anything in the way of air conditioning. It's boiling outside right now. Earlier today, I had started overheating really quickly as the temperature rose in the building. I have a medical condition where my body can't regulate temperature well, meaning I'm at the risk of passing out. I was going to get a bottle of water from the fridge to help me cool down when I was stopped by one of the company's managers. Let's call him Kyle for this story. Kyle, where are you going? Me, I was only going to get some water. Kyle, you're supposed to be working right now. You can get the water during the coffee break. Me, I, I, I don't think you understand that I can actually be in danger from this heat right now, so could I please go get one bottle of water? Kyle, no, you're not authorized to leave your work before the clock strikes. Now shut up and get back to work. Me, roger that. Keep in mind that this conversation was held in front of my co-workers. Cue malicious compliance. I got back to work, making sure to put on some extra coal just to make sure I made up for lost time. Basically, I was forcing my body into shock and heat stroke was just around the corner. Fast forward about 30 minutes. I had to tell my co-workers through my strained breath that I don't feel too good which was actually even worse now as I was working on deck of one of these boats, give or take three meters above the floor. When I made my way towards the ladder to climb down, I only got out a very strained, oh, crap, and I fell off the back and was headed straight for the concrete floor below me. Luckily for me, some co-workers reacted fast enough and managed to catch me before my head was splat open on the floor. I woke up in an ambulance about an hour later. The EMTs were checking my vitals and were actually helping me. My boss came up to the door and asked me what happened. I told him exactly as I told you guys, and I also told him to check with my coworkers if he didn't believe me. Long story boring. I was brought to the hospital for a checkup just to make sure I didn't actually suffer any kind of trauma from the fall. A buddy of mine came with me to make sure I got there and back safely. A few hours passed and my buddy got a call. He picked up and it was Kyle. My buddy handed me the phone and I heard Kyle on the other end apologizing for actually almost getting me killed. The short version is that he was heavily reprimanded for what he told me and was put on watch. Didn't lose his position though, so I guess I didn't fully win. But he was liable for the medical compensation for my situation. I did forgive him and just to rub it in a bit, I had to ask him. Am I authorized to get water next time? And my buddy just laughed. Recently in Texas, there was something that changed in the law and that they basically took away people's water breaks. And it's one of the states in the country where people die the most from heat exhaustion and lack of water. So it's kind of mind boggling that somebody would do that, but it happened. At this rate, we'll be in the Stone Age and probably another hundred years. We're going backwards. Our next story is by No Language 7256. How I managed my first micromanager. Back in 2010, I was working in a training management area within a government department. The job was fairly easy for me. When my original supervisor went on extended leave, I got a new supervisor that we will call Agatha. Almost immediately, Agatha started to micromanage me even though she didn't really know my job that well or even half of what my role entailed. Now I will say, that I didn't particularly like Agatha as a person, but I tried to get along with her, even when her management style started to show. In hindsight, I should have worked some internal politics to be removed from the area. No one said I was smart at 19. The section started to have some underlying tension until one day she called me into a meeting and long combo cut short, she said the magic words, 
you need to do what I tell you to do and not what you think you need to do. She even followed it up by emailing me words to the same effect. Now, I did two things on the heels of that meeting. Firstly, I printed out the email to keep in my bag, drawer, pocket, and on my wall. Secondly, I started to do what she said, and only what she said. At first, she would just tell me the jobs that needed completing, but she only got worse when she noticed the work wasn't getting done and started to tell me how to do things. Again, I complied and only did exactly what she told me and how she told me to do it. If she missed a step in her instructions, I would either skip it, if I could move on, or ask her to explain it again as I couldn't figure it out. I was a darned good employee. I even went out of my way to start asking her what I should be doing and how, after every task. If she wasn't in the area which was very common, I would wait for her to come back. If she wanted to micromanage me, I would make her work for it. She was getting nothing done. We were getting further and further behind. This went on for about a month. The reputation of our section was tanking internally and externally. Enter Michelle, Agatha's boss. She noticed all my questions in the general drop in productivity, morale, and reputation. She pulled me aside and asked me what was happening considering I am normally so competent or efficient and don't ask many questions about how to do the work. Small aside, Michelle was a fantastic boss and generally preferred a more hands-off approach when she could. She clearly was giving Agatha enough rope to either make a ladder or something else. Now back to the story. I explained to Michelle how Agatha was managing me and I was just trying to help her management style by leaning into it. I also showed her Agatha's email. At this point, I estimated I could get everything caught up in about a week without working any extended hours if things changed. Michelle, being a good boss, simply asked what it would take for me to go back to working the way I always have. I only asked to not be managed by Agatha anymore. I could have been much more insidious with my request, but I only wanted to be left alone to do my work. To my surprise, it worked. I immediately started reporting directly to Michelle. I got the work caught up in three days, surpassing even my own expectations. As for Agatha, she started to have her work examined a lot more closely, including her overall output since, as I found out later, she was trying to blame me for her low work output. It turned out that I was, in fact, the solution. Michelle ended up sharing Agatha's workload between the two of us, and we didn't really notice much difference. Agatha, however, did notice a difference as she was shuffled into another area of the department. One with a lot less responsibility and a whole lot less promotion opportunity. I ran into Agatha again after I had moved around the country a few times. I ended up back in the same office, but a different section. Agatha was still in the same crappy position. Same level, too. Her personal reputation was so bad that only a handful of people would actually work with her. It felt good to know how stuck she was, or presumably still is. Malicious compliance, okay, I'll do what you want, but you won't like it. Sorry, I had to dance to that one because that one made me feel good. I don't like micromanaging managers. Do every little thing that I tell you to do. If people are competent enough, you should be able to see that as a manager, and you should not interfere. Our next story is by Dramatic But Aware. You want to know where I am at all times? Your wish is my command. I've been lurking on the sub for a hot minute, and I saw a post that reminded me of my own MC story. Sorry for any formatting issues, since I'm on a mobile. This happened about eight years ago, one year into my first job, which was a paid internship or clerking gig. I don't know what to call it. The firm that I worked for had a part-time program for law students so they could work and gain experience while in school. Very common in my country. I loved my job. I was very grateful for the opportunity to learn and grow, and I really enjoyed the work I performed. The thing was, I had classes both in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon and night, and my school was at a different side of the city about eight miles away, and that could turn into hours of traffic during rush hour in a city with eight million inhabitants. So my days looked pretty hectic as something like this. 5.30 to 7, get ready to drive to school. 7 to 9, class. 9 to 10-ish, drive to work. 
10 ish to 1700 hours. Work, 1700 to 1800. Drive to school, 1800 to 2200. Classes. Then I would try to study for one hour after class, and I would often eat while driving. During my first year in the program, I had more than proven myself and earned my place. I was that 19 or 20 year old idiot type A overachiever that knew no boundaries. I had worked weekends, pulled all-nighters. Literally, I would leave school at 10 effing p.m. and go back to work, worked full-time in the summers without more pay, anything I had to do to keep the associates happy so they'd keep teaching me. As I was wrapping up my first anniversary there, the perfect storm of awful rolled around. On the academic front, I started a new semester, and twice a week in the mornings I had a teacher who was awesome, but would finish class 20 to 30 minutes late. On the work front, a new partner joined the firm, let's call him Mr. Jerk, A-H for short, and kind of took over as unofficial managing partner. He was the typical old-fashioned lawyer that should be extinct by now. He could barely use Microsoft Word to type a contract and would pass out at the sight of an Excel sheet. He had this weird obsession with punctuality while simultaneously being late to everything. Plus, he moronically believed that by having a bunch of people warming up the chairs, he would magically make money. So instead of investing time on client development, he would just spend endless time and effort on bullying everyone around the office. To make matters worse, since other people spoke highly of me, he decided to pay special attention to me. Unsurprisingly, shortly after AH joined, the firm started struggling. Now, he could have tried to get new clients, send quotes by the deadline, and show up to meetings on time. But no, of course the firm was doing poorly because us clerks did not spend enough time warming up the chairs. So he became obsessed with us getting there by 10 a.m., especially me. The issue was that I could not get there by 10 because my teacher finished the class late and there was no way I could drive from across the city in rush hour in under 30 minutes. So A.H. called a meeting with all the clerks and yelled at me in front of everyone because I was always late, more like two times a week, but whatever. The fact that I had gotten permission from the program committee did not matter. The fact that I was working six or seven hours a day while I only had to work five did not matter. The fact that I would work weekends and late nights did not matter. I tried to explain, but he kept yelling at me and would not let me talk. Having had enough, I left the conference room straight into the office of every member of the clerk program committee, one junior associate, one senior associate, and one partner, to say the same speech. I am late because I have class. I have proven my commitment to the firm, but my education is important too. If 30 minutes late twice a week is too big of an issue, then feel free to fire me, but I am not leaving class early. Then I went to my desk to do my work. I guess the committee informed other partners and word got around what was going on. Small firm. Because as I was getting ready to leave for school, A.H. came fuming to my desk and told me, I know you are lying. From now on, I want to know where you are at all times. And if I catch that you were slacking off or lying, you are fired and I will make sure no one will ever hire you. So, cue malicious compliance. The next day I woke up extra early, 5 a.m. sharp, took a timestamp photo and sent it to both his email and phone, since I could not risk him not getting it and him not knowing where I was. I sent a timestamp photo every five minutes captioning what I was doing like I was my own personal social media platform of one follower. The cherry on top was that my teacher had worked with A.H. in the past and obviously did not like him very much, so he let me take photos during the class and diligently sent them to A.H. I even went as far as taking a photo of the toilet door with the peeing and then at the end of the toilet flushing, all done. While driving, since traffic was really slow, I would send a photo and include how much I had moved during that time. Sometimes it was something absurd, like a hundred feet. As soon as I sent a photo of me at my desk, he shows up saying that he got the point and I could stop. A couple weeks later, he simply stopped bugging people and started working from home or locking himself up in his office. 
My guess is I was not the only one to complain, and the other partner realized how dangerous he could be for the firm and asked him to back off. Some people, as managers, are overachievers, and they just can't let you be. Anyway, 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 we've come to the end of another episode. Until we meet again, have a spiffing day.